Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Thursday, November the 21st. Wow, the month is really getting on, isn't it? Um, it's 2.32 p.m. and I haven't even been to YouTube yet, but um, in my email, I had a lot of email this morning and that's all I got through was some of that. And then I did a little furniture tweaking. Still, I'm worried about going out, leaving my dog. I know he likes to get on my bed, so I made it where it's easier, going to be easier for me to just shove the bed a little bit and then put those stairs in order and pray that he uses them. That's all I can do. If he chooses to jump past them, I can't help it. Now let's get on with the news I wanted to share from Israel. We learned, I don't know if any of you saw it. Somebody put a link in the description box of my last or second last video. President Trump did make a statement saying he did go to the hospital. He said it was for routine stuff. That he visited around the hospital for a while, visited a young man that, I forget what he said, why, what happened to him, and their family. Yeah, so he was there a little while, and said everything was fine, and uh, when he got back, everyone was saying, are you okay? We heard you had a heart attack. His staff. Okay. Now, I'm. you can read into it what you want. I'm reading into it what I want. That's That was the latest out of the president's mouth. That his staff asked him, Are you okay? We, we heard you had a heart attack. Okay. Moving on to Israel. And I find this pretty important. A country without a government is it's not good news for them. you got to have some laws and writing. Which, by the way, brings me, I'm going to give you another something I'm going to share with you from Dabu. Anyway, let me read this. I'll read part of it, and I'll leave the link. This is from Israel AM. Posted November 20, it's for November 21st. So from over there, it probably happened yesterday. But let's see. Well, you know how they're, they're eight hours ahead of us. It says, last night, blue and white leader Gantz informed President Rivlin that he is unable to form a government. Now, there will be a 21-day period during which any member of the Knesset can form a government. I find that interesting. That seems to be a deal-breaker for the blue and white leadership. That must be equivalent to the Democrats or something. I don't know, or maybe, maybe they're more conservative. Anyway, I don't know which is which. Who refused to have a prime minister who is under criminal investigation and could be indicted within the next few weeks on fraud. Wait a minute. I think I left out. Oh, I did. I left out a very important line. Sorry. It's um, kind of little. Let me check my placement here. Well, there, I'm just bigger. Okay. All right, let me start over. Now there will be a 21-day period during which any member of the Knesset can form a government. Prime Minister Netanyahu urged Gantz to join a unity government with... Of course, Netanyahu as Prime Minister. A unity government? Is that something like our Republicans and 
Democrats coming together to form one thing instead of two things. Unity. There's that word again. That's why I thought this was important. All come together for the new world order. Okay, moving on. Of course, Netanyahu is prime minister. That's what Netanyahu was suggesting. That seems to be a deal breaker for the blue and white leadership who refuse to have a prime minister who is under criminal investigation and could be indicted within the next few weeks on fraud, breach of trust, and bribery charges. Even if he is indicted, that would mean that he has to step down from his political role. But it could put... Okay, let me back up. Even if he is indicted, that wouldn't... I didn't, wasn't sure I said that right. That would not mean that he has to step down from his political role. But it could put a damper on his election prospects. Okay, their, their government is weird. Well, not a really, because look at ours. Okay, they're trying to impeach our president. Supposedly, there's some impeachment stuff going on. And meanwhile, he's still president. So I guess it's a similar thing. Until they prove he did what they think he did. All right. And it could put a damper on his election prospects or not. It doesn't seem to bother his voters very much. Sound familiar? More troubling for Netanyahu could be a challenge from within his own party by his whoops what happened oh i already am subscribed go away okay okay where was i more troubling for netanyahu could be a challenge from within his own party by his primary rival gideon sar s-a-a-r sar maybe they say it like that who claims he would be able to form a unity government and avoid a third round of elections. That's really weird. A third round? But it's unlikely that Netanyahu will be unseated by his own party. Now he's real popular over there. And do you all remember, some of you may not have heard this. I didn't report on it because others were. Well, President Trump made the statement that if all, how did he word it? If every, I'll just rephrase. If everything goes wrong over here, I'll just go to Israel and become their king. That's what he said. Uh, that was probably just, well... That was said for a reason. You see, nothing is, nothing is a joke. Nothing is a coincidence. What comes out of their mouth, I, I would dare say 99% of the time, is meant to be said. Every tweet, man's not dumb. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, this is talking about Russia. All right, Russia condemned Israel's attack against Iranian bases in Syria yesterday and also revealed information about another four Israeli attacks that occurred in the last 10 days. They accused Israel of causing increased tensions and the potential for conflict around Syria and counter attack, ca counteracting our efforts to control the situation. So apparently, Russia is trying to control the situation, but Israel keeps sh shooting in rockets. Four Israeli attacks occurred in ten days. 
Yeah, there's stuff going on over there. We knew there would be. Wars and rumors of wars. Okay. The members of the UN Security Council. Now we're getting global here. Strongly opposed the U.S. The United States announcement that it no longer considers Israeli settlements to be a violation of international law and warned that the new American policy undermines a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Were you all aware of that? That we announced that it no longer considers Israeli settlements to be a violation of international law. Apparently the settlements that are in Palestinian, so-called Palestinian territory, wouldn't you think that's what it means? Because this is news to me. And warned that the new American policy undermines a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This is very interesting. You see, it might seem boring to some of you, but if you think about it, it's like the it's like you're making fudge. It takes an hour, and you're tired of waiting. And finally, that heat causes that chocolatey substance to start bubble. It's starting to bubble. It's bubbling. It's bubbling up a little bit more. Oh, there's a bubble. There's a bubble. Won't be long now. That's how I'm seeing it. I mean, just had a, like, a thought in my head just came up. Like you're cooking something thick on the stove and you're waiting and fudge came to my mind. Don't we all love fudge? Ooh, the end result is so worth waiting for. Oh, let's continue. Okay. Britain, France, Germany, Belgium, and Poland also released a statement reiterating that all settlement activity is illegal under international law. So now we're breaking international law or we're just making statements against it. Okay, that's the end of it. Well, that was the end of it. That was a short one. I thought it would go on and I would let you read the rest. But I thought, well, there might be more in there that's really good. So anyway, I'm going to end this here. Um, well, I could go ahead and tell you about... Let me go ahead and tell you about this. Um, I'm just going to pull up my history and make it all in one. And tell you... Because I don't even remember what all he said. But once I... Let's see. It was only three minutes. Okay. Okay, here it is. Now listen to this. This is big. Listen to this. I'm just going to let well, you Well, guess listen. what just happened while no one was paying attention? That's right. They got another one over on us. Because they've got the whole country and most of the world talking about these impeachment hearings, right? Mm-hmm. Which is just a load of crap. And guess what they've done while everyone is looking over here into right field? They rolled the crew out in the left field, and they reauthorized the Patriot Act. Hey, like them apples? I didn't think you would, but I figured you would. If, if y'all don't know, the Patriot Act was signed into law to be good for, I think it was 10 years, which that was in 2001. Or maybe it was longer than that and it ran out. But anyway, they just re-signed it back into law. That's uh, allowing them. They can arrest you for no reason. Hold you without a phone call. I mean, it's got all kind of... You should research it. The Patriot Act. on Not on here, on Google or, or your favorite search engine. Google knows everything you search, but 
I'm not so sure the others don't either. But anyway, you should ch look it up if you don't know what all is in it. It basically takes away all our freedoms whenever anything happens, like uh, another terrorist attack or something else goes down. That's real huge. Okay, let me let him finish. Would want to know. This is what's just happened. House Democrats did this, slipping this unqualified renewal of this draconian Patriot Act into this emergency funding bill. And they voted near unanimously for sweeping surveillance across the board through the notorious NSA. So, this is a three-month reauthorization of the notorious Patriot Act. It was shoehorned into this last-minute continuing resolution, or the CR resolution, in government funding. And this all goes back to 9-11. Mm -hmm. So, here we go, while no one's paying attention, House Democrats just reauthorized this for three months? Why three months? Three months. What's going to happen in this three months? A weird time frame. In a weird... Or something that they expect will be happening sometime in the next three months. I'll stop it there at the 141 mark. And it's three minutes long if you'd like to go hear the rest. But he's got a point here. Why three months? They signed that Patriot Act... 2001, right after 9-11, had it already drawn up. They had it ready. It was so... People just failed for it. It's ridiculous. Anyway, um, I guess they think that they're all smart enough to draw something like that up overnight. I mean, it was just real quick. But anyway, now we're back under the Patriot Act. I didn't even realize we were out from under it. It seemed like things were worse, not better. Anyway, it was just there in case of another terrorist attack. In case something happened. What do you think might happen in the next three months? To cause chaos. So they can have martial law. You know, pull out the National Guard. Well, you know, a lot of things could happen. We might be going home after all. Satan knows a lot. He knows the Bible better than we do. Let me tell you something. He knows all those little mystery clues that people keep finding. They say, oh, you know, in, Israel, in um, Isaiah and in Jeremiah and in Micah and in, in Daniel, you know, People are finding these little gems that the Lord left us in the Word. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed. And the Bible is more amazing than most people think. It's like a, like a mystery novel, almost, except it's the history and God's old law and then how God changed the law for the New Testament for the church to go by and then if you just read it on the surface this is what you're you know you saw how Jesus was born and how he died and things he taught us and then you see what Paul taught us and then there's this weird book called Revelation and you oh I can't figure this out and a lot of people don't ever figure it out I didn't for the longest Till the Lord told me to start reading it, and then things started coming to light. Well, anyhow, when you read your word, just ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand it, and maybe he'll give you a little gem or two, and then you share it with us, okay? All right, I'm going to end this right here. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over my computer, and over each and every one of you and all of your devices and your internet connections. And with that, I will say bye for now. 
I will talk to you later.